Okay, we're over here today on Coney Island. We're coming to visit Peter the Warden. And uh, Peter's been on the island for quite a while, and we're just going to ask him about his, his times here. Well, uh, I've been here almost 20 years now. It's been fun, I've got to say. It, uh, it was uh, 20 short years. It's had its trials and tribulations, but then like everything else, uh, you get through them, you know, you get through them. It's been good. It's been good. The, um, some fun experiences, some, some not so good. Um, I remember one time there, very recently actually, uh, I went down, had the big boat crossed and, and it tied up, had a tight little fence down at the jetty. And uh, I was going to do a shopping, I came down on Tuesday morning. This couple were lying up in what I can only describe as a more than passionate embrace in the grass. Indefensible position, the clothes were over there, they were there. And uh, they didn't stop what they're doing, they kept on going. I swear she said hello to me as I went to my boat. I had to fiddle between her legs to get the ropes undone from my boat. <laughs> and reverse back, I thought, hold on a minute, how did you get here? There was no boat. And I went back a bit and there was a wee yacht sailing just north of here. I thought, I bet he's left them people here. Well, I'll, uh, I must, um, I'll ask him when he's in again. When he was in the next a couple of days later, and I said, uh, tell me, uh, did you leave a couple here last Tuesday? I didn't get a chance to talk to him. He says, I did. He says, that was my wife and a friend of mine. Uh, uh, they wanted to spend an hour on the island, so I went for a little sail. Sail for myself. <laughs> his wife and a friend of his. <laughs> so, yes, there's been lots of... Uh, Lots of fun times here now. Uh, must uh, have seen some barbecues and oh, some yes, crack yes, visiting yes, boats. Indeed, indeed. Uh, one of the big problems here was um, a particular fisherman. He was a kleptomaniac. And uh, he just couldn't resist stealing stuff from the boat. And you get a few drinks on him in the evening and then coming past, you'd see the boat and you have to take something. It'd be something for me. It'd be a fender or a rope or something. But it's annoying when it's missing. And then the following day, you'd see him going up and there's your stuff in his boat. But you couldn't say it was yours because a fender's a fender, the rope's a rope. And I was determined to get him. And I remember it well, a lovely May day, a lovely hot summer's day. And I went to my bed at about 12 o'clock that night. And my head hadn't hit the pillow when I heard this boat coming down the lot. But that's all to be in. Going for an old fender or a That engine stops, he'd get nothing off my boat this night. So, um, 10 minutes later the engine quit. And I up and dressed and out. And the first thing to hit me was the heat. Such a glorious night. The moon was as big as I've seen it. The island was silver. It was beautiful. And uh, it took me a few minutes to collect myself and I thought, oh, better short him out. And I went down through the first grass area and there again, another couple lying up in a more than passionate embrace. A friend of mine said I should have handed them a leaflet on the way past. <laughs> I went down into the picnic area and there was a couple lined up and I hung on with the radio. So I flicked this away back to me bed. Well, Donna Trainer came out here and she'd done a half hour show. And the producer had me set up to tell that story, you see. And I told it on the television. And no sooner it was broadcast, no sooner had the credits started to go up on the screen than uh, the tabloid newspapers were ringing, looking at the names of the young people, you see. But what happens in Coney stairs and Coney, that, that didn't, that wasn't going to happen. But a few days later, I had to go and see my mother. And my mother was a lovely lady, she was in her 80s at that stage. And uh, I walked in, she was sitting with a face on her like thunder. Hey, ma, what's wrong? She said, I'm ashamed of you. Disgusted at you, she says. Why didn't you correct those young people on their morals? <laughs> yeah. So for another hour, I had to sit and listen to a lecture on mor mor morality. Yeah. But tell us a wee bit about the cottage and a wee bit about the history of it. Well, the cottage was built by James Alfred Caulfield. Now, he was a 7th Viscount, 11th Baron Charnamont, and uh, his big claim to fame had been the Crimean War. But he must have distinguished himself in that campaign, because he was sent over to Ireland by Queen Victoria under the title of the Usher to the Black Rod of St. Patrick. And what that meant was he was responsible for all visiting royals and dignitaries. He made sure they met the right people and dined in the right houses. But the correct protocols of all. So that's why he bought the island. He bought the island and he built the cottage in 1890. Well, he bought the bought, bought the island in 1894, built the cottage in 1895, 
and it was used for visiting royals. And among the most notable of the people that came here were Edward VII and Lily Langtry. Edward VII was the Prince Royal, and Lily Langtry was the highest paid call girl of London at the time. And they spent a month and a half here in Coney Island, so the cottage was used, that was its purpose. But if you see the ironwork across the roof, at the top of the roof you can see the shamrock that rose in the thistle, picked out in glorious detail, which is very forward thinking for a Victorian period. Yeah. In that gable end there, there's a, a disc. It's only an information plaque, but it was a grill. There is a grill in this gable end, and at the back there's an open lattice work of brick, all to allow the easy entrance and egress of bats to and from the roof space. The Victorians loved their bats, mainly because they would add the aphids that would attack their flowers, their plants and that. The, um, but the big problem, of course, with bats is droppings. And uh, so the, the Victorians would use sacking across the joists to catch the droppings. Uh, we use polythene sheet today. The Victorians said that the droppings are good on rhubarb, but I prefer a bit of custard myself. Ah. Better this week. <laughs> <laughs> so of all the bats that um, that you have, plus one species that they thought was a new species, but it's been here for over a hundred years. So we've got pipistrels, natters, leslers, dobentons, and the new one, the thuzlis pipistrel, all in the roof space of Coney Cottage. So you, have, so, you have, so you have four or five species of bat yeah. living with you here, so you, should, so you haven't really been alone for the last <laughs> 20 years? Well actually, I'm out here on the day and they're in, they're probably only social, when I'm in at night they're out. So oh, well, <laughs> maybe the best thing you can have there. The um, fishermen, um, the, the Victorians, as I said, welcomed the bats, but they didn't seem to do what they wanted them to do here, because fishermen go out at half one the day to set their lines and they're out at half four in the morning to lift them. And they tell me when they're out in the morning, they see big rafts of bats coming back from the shore to here. So the bats are actually leaving here and going to feed on the shore. They're not staying here, they're mm. not feeding around here, you know. Not enough. I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's, uh, maybe not the right selection of food for them here. 